It's begonia time! So I know I've stated this in the past, and I'm not really a cereal plant purchaser. I save up my money for a little while, and then I'll make like a bulk purchase of that particular plant. Because oftentimes when it comes to plants that I like, like Hoyas or begonias, for example, I will go ahead and wait and find like a place that specializes in one particular genus and then you know, just hoard, just hoard my brains out. All winter long, <laughs> I, I suffered through watching a lot of my plants die because I was not prepared for the winter weather and the gray skies of Lille and the rain and the rain and the rain and the rain. I decided that this spring I would invest in begonias because I miss begonias. Deep in my heart of hearts, I love begonias. They are my plant. And sure, I got sidetracked for a little while by Hoyas, and probably that's gonna happen again. Let's not lie to ourselves. But this spring, I had my eyes set on collecting Hoyas. Er I mean begonias, I mean begonias. They do well in low light, first of all. And second of all, I finally felt like I had risen to a level of being able to maintain Rhizomatous begonias without killing them. Like I've learned their language, you know? I've, I've, like, I've learned to listen to them and to know when to water them and when to not water them. So I decided to invest in a shit ton of begonias. So I recently made two little begonia, what's the word? Halls from two different uh, nurseries. One of them is Le Pepinière, uh, Le, Mont, Le Mont de des Fougères. Oh my Jesus God, I cannot speak French today. <laughs> Le Mont des Fougères, which means like the, the world of ferns because they really specialize in ferns, but they also have a wonderful begonia collection and I could not resist. The second company that I ordered from is Hodnik. I once upon a time made another begonia haul video. I had ordered from them a begonia good and plenty, a begonia, I wanna say snow cap, and then a cracklin rosely, R rosy. Begonia cracklin rosely, I still can't say it, holy God. I'm drinking tea. Begon, I just said begonia. Really, I can't get it today, I can't, I can't, I can't. You know what, let's just shut it down. Let's shut it down, we're shutting it down. I ordered begonia cracklin rosy, begonia snow cap, and begonia good and plenty. Unfortunately, snow cap and cracklin rosy bit it this winter. They bit it hard, I didn't, they did not make it. And I still have, begonia good and plenty, but it's really not... There was an issue with powdery mildew. I have another video about that if you're interested in begonia powdery mildew. I had an issue with that in my apartment um, just at the end of winter. And good and plenty didn't have a good time at that and I'm still trying to recuperate it. So first I'm just gonna show you the begonias that I got from Le Monde des Fougères. Beautiful begonias, really absolutely. But I'm not repotting those today. I'm just repotting the ones from Hodnik because they come in these, you know, these, um, I don't know the word for this. Begonia berkeleyi. This is a begonia that does best in high humidity, so I've been keeping it in this temporarily, but I have ordered um, a better situation for this. I really like bell jars and like jars like this. That's like, that's kind of my thing. I've considered getting a terrarium to put my begonias in, but they just look too zooey. I don't know. It looks too much like you're going to the Serpentarium with the zoo. I just really, I like that kind of apothecary look where you have like bell jars with things inside them. Like Begonia berkeleyi. Did I say that correctly? But did I say berconia? So, Begonia berkeleyi. I can't figure out exactly. There's just something wrong with me today. Begonia berkeleyi was collected by Rick Morris. 
a botanist um, during her expeditions to an area of the eastern Himalayas of India called Arunachal Pradesh. And apparently her expeditions were quite, da quite dangerous at that time. She actually wrote a book, uh, it was published in 2017, and it is comprised of species from this specific area of India. It's called Species, it's called, it's called, it's a, got a long title. It's called, you know what, I'm gonna read it. It's called Species of Begonias of the Eastern Himalayas of Arunachal, India. And this area of Arunachal is called the Orchid State of India, or Paradise of the Botanists. So I can kind of understand why a botanist might put her life at stake to visit this area and find species like Begonia berkeleyi because it's absolutely beautiful. That is my Begonia berkeleyi. Thank you for listening. This is Begonia Raja. It is a magnificent begonia. It looks like a tortoise shell. It's so beautiful. When it arrived, it had blooms and the blooms are like a really light pink color. They're very pretty. I mean, they look like typical begonia blooms, but they're very, very pretty. And this is a begonia that requires really high humidity. So I'm keeping it in a jar. So this is a Rosamidus begonia that was discovered in the Monet. So this is a Rosamidus begonia that was discovered in the Mon me! That was discovered in the Malay Peninsula by, what's his name? Henry Nicholas Ridley in 1894. And fun fact about Ridley, he was absolutely obsessed with pressing the rubber industry in the Malay Peninsula. And his passion for the rubber tree production was so passionate that he was called Mad Ridley. They all called him Mad Ridley in those days. Like, really? Is that the only nickname you could come up with? Like, Rubber Ridley would be better. Rubber Ridley, call him Rubber, not Matt, Matt, Matt Ridley. Maybe he was, I don't know, maybe he was a little crazy. Like, at least you, there you have alliteration. Anybody could be mad about any subject whatsoever. I'm completely mad about plants, but they don't call me Mad Betsy. Maybe they do, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's a beautiful begonia. It does best in, uh, you know, Partial sun to shade. This one in particular really needs a lot of humidity, so I keep it in this little terrarium with his friend, my begonia Roomba. Well, we're not talking about begonia Roomba today. So. Forget about begonia Roomba, okay? I'm gonna do a begonia tour eventually. You just pull, just hang on, just hold on to your pants. Just keep your drawers on. Begonia goguenzis, goguenzis. Gogoenzas? I can I, I really don't know the exact pronunciation of it. But it's pretty cool. It has like this really rippled texture to it and these round leaves that are absolutely beautiful. And uh I don't know, I just really like it. What do you want from me? This is another Rosalmidus begonia that was described in 1881 by Nicholas Edward Brown! I can't remember these people's names. You have to give me a break. He was actually, like he was a plant taxonomist. <sighs> Guego Sumatra, 1881, Nicholas Edward Brown. And the funny thing about Nicholas Edward Brown is that he was actually a plant taxonomist. Taxonomist. Taxonomist who specialized in succulents. But he got a hold of this little fellow. What, what? That's the story, that's it. That's all I got for you. That's that's the uh, story of Begonia Gogoenzis. Now I know that y'all, for whatever reason, like to hear me ramble on about various plants and genesis and um, their requirements and like obsess over them. And I really appreciate your audience because um, if it weren't for you, I would be the most boring person at any social event ever. But I also know that a lot of you are just genuinely similar to me. You are interested and curious about new things. You want to improve on your talents or you want to learn new talents. You want to expand as a human being. So I just want to take a minute to talk about Skillshare. Skillshare is a community of curious and creative people who are genuinely just looking to grow. I have personally benefited from courses on topics like entrepreneurship, 
production or vlogging. The most recent course that I've been following is Going Freelance, Building and Branding Your Own Success by Justin Gagnac. I do it when I want, I can do it when I have time. Based on ideas that you guys have given me, I think that courses like Video on a Budget, Prepare Your Shoot Without Breaking the Bank by Christopher Rhodes, AKA YC Imaging, or Drawing as Self-Discovery, Five Ways to Start by Mary Andrew. So if you are interested, the first 1,000 people to click the link in my description below will get two free months of premium membership with Skillshare. And you can cancel at any time. So why not just give it a start, see where it gets you, and think about it, you know? Kickstart your creativity. So on to the begonias that I got from Hardneck, which I would like to repot today. I'm going to start with Begonia Orpha C. Fox. Now, Hardneck calls this Orphea Fox, but I can't find any other examples of Orphea Fox being a Begonia hybrid. Um, I can only find Orphea C. Fox. So I think that they have simply mislabeled this plant by accident. I forgot the pots. I need the pots. Where did I put the pots? <laughs> the pots are right here. This is a cane type begonia, which is one of my favorite. And I'm getting more into rhizomatous begonias now that I'm understanding better and better how to take care of them. So this was hybridized in 1974 and then it was officially published in 1981 by Michael J. Carutz. And I really don't have any more information about it than that. It's just, an absolutely beautiful, beautiful cane type begonia. I'm not gonna break the roots up too much because it's quite healthy. They've sent me such a beautiful, wonderful specimen. I don't know what it is about cane type begonias. I just think they're so beautiful. They're like a, this one especially, it, the red leaves. And this one has like, uh, it's got the, not spots, but it has like stripes on it. And I just, I fell in love with it immediately when I saw it. It's, it's still looking pretty curly, but once the leaves become more mature, they really open up and it's absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful begonia. So that's potted up. Let's go on to the next one. The next one that I have, I keep in a little jar. It's called Begonia Timothy or Timothy. It's just so stunning. It has these beautiful autumn colored leaves that are like orangish, reddish, greenish. Some of them have spots. It looks like the more mature that it becomes, the more spots it develops. Um, I, I really hope that I, I can keep it in my home without um, killing it. <laughs> the soil that it was in was just so, I mean, it's like, it's almost all peat. It's just really, it's like swampy, heavy. Cane type begonias do best in a nice airy soil. Although they always benefit from high humidity, always. Like hands down, they will always benefit from high humidity. So there we go. He's good to go. Happy little begonia, Timothy, Timothy, whatever you want to call him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Next, I have Begonia Passing Storm. So, let's put him in here. It, it, it was like really leaning in the pot that they put it in, so I'm trying my best to... I know that no matter like which direction I put it, like it's growing in this direction for the most part, right? But if I put it so that the sun or the light source is facing this direction, it will eventually gravitate towards the light. So it will balance itself out. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it has little white blooms too. It has little white flowers. They're so pretty. There's one little white flower growing on it. And oh, I love it when I receive begonias in the mail and they have flowers on them. Like, oh, so exciting, so exciting. Okay, so he's good. The next one is Begonia Metallica. It is, at the same time, shiny super dimpled in the leaves and fuzzy. It just defies the laws of begonia. Like one day I was in Paris and I was walking down the street and I saw this begonia in the window of a Chinese restaurant. And I sent a picture to the upstairs jungle and I told him like, do you know what this is? And he said, well, it looks like begonia um, Metallica. And I was like, oh, I need it. Uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll have another begonia haul. I'm not even lying. 
I had told my <laughs> I had told myself like in the spring I am going to begonia. I am going to full begonia. And that is exactly what I've done. I don't even know how many I've ordered so far. I don't want to count. I don't want to admit to how many I've ordered so far. I know that in my next order, I'm gonna have like eight coming from the UK. And I also um, contacted a vendor in Ukraine. Um, I went dark, I went deep. I, I just, I started Googling Begonia hybrids. Things got out of hand. I got on websites where I don't understand the language and then suddenly I was writing to people asking them if they can, well, you know, He's ready to go, so let's just not talk about that. So the next one in my bunch is Begonia Abel Carrière. Uh, this is a Rex that was hybridized in Belgium by Svan. <laughs> I couldn't, I could only find the surname of the person. I couldn't find uh, the, the first or middle name of the person who hybridized this, but it was back in 1876. So this has been around for a long time. He's all potted up. Okay, so we have officially made an absolute mess of my living room. I'm gonna have to vacuum, which is a real shame because I broke my vacuum cleaner this morning, but we're gonna make it through. I wanna thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that you take the time to watch my channel and I'm so grateful for you. I love hearing from you, so please, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thank you so much. If you wanna support me, you can do that. I have a Patreon account. Also, please join the Discord. There are an amazing group of people on the Discord. They're wonderful. Everyone is completely obsessed with plants, but we also talk about other things. So please feel free to join the Discord we would be more than happy to have you there. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. I would like to thank my $10 patrons, Carolyn Green, Chris Litzkis, Jay Kennedy, my $6 patron, Patty Nash, my $5 patrons, Adam Benz, of Awkwardly, Abby Chai, Guy Elizabeth, Murray, Aaron, Meow, Fenner, Lamb, Giselle, Dow, Haley, Kayla, Man, Chris, Delath, Lynn, Laura, Wright, Michael, Bacuzzi, Romina, Race, Jan, and Spaniel, Tammy, De Bacon, my $2 patrons, Abigail, Colin, Addo, B, Emma Valentine, Georgia, Thomas, Kata, Gukla, Janine, Kabiri, and Karen, Martin, Childress, Pamela, Renee Allen, and Steve A, and my $1 patrons, Aria Platanic, Clam, Buck, Clam, Lynn, Denise, Grim, Elisa, Matsuyata, Elizabeth, Mary, Elizabeth, Velasquez, Isabel, Lengua, Ivy, Tua, Jesse, Gigi, Carabin, Jordan, Jepson, Josie, Kara, Freeman, Creek, Charter, Caleb, Deborah, Port, Chris, Bjorn, Leslie, Young, Lexi, Haynes, Linda, Thea, Lisa, Meg, Megan, Pummel, Melissa, Monstera, Michael, Minor, Miles, Robson, Nicholas, Curtis, Simon, Sophia, Sophia, Clark, Valhalla, Fiasco, and Wanya, thank you so much. Hey. I'll see you soon. Bye.